All right. Welcome to uh, Crypto News and Investigate Reports. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're able to join us today. Um, I want to say I'm not a, a financial advisor, so please do your own due diligence in terms of um, of crypto news and investigative reports. Please do your own due, dil due diligence. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, I want to start it. I want to start off with uh, this right here. This was a article that came out earlier today, uh, and it came out, and it is uh, regarding Ripple XRP. It says Ripple beating Swift with significantly higher speeds and minimal cost. And that's, that was one of the things that most people that invested into uh, Ripple XRP, one of the things they knew about Ripple is that it was much faster than, um, much faster than anything that was out there. And it, the other thing was that we knew that it was better than the SWIFT system. So everybody that, that kind of knew that, knew that Ripple would be a real good investment. And at the cost right now, you, you can't beat uh, purchasing Ripple at uh, 26, 25, 26 cents. So you're four, four dollar, three, four dollar. In fact, even if it went to a dollar, I met a guy in San Francisco that bought Ripple at three dollars, and he said it was still a great buy. So um, most of us that it, that most of the investors that invest in Ripple XRP knew uh, that after seeing the software and knowing that it was a uh, a dynamite technological advance on the blockchain knew that purchasing Ripple XRP was a seriously good investment. And uh, and we most of us already knew that it was faster than SWIFT. SWIFT was made 1973 uh, before the internet and before blockchain. So uh, we know SWIFT's an outdated technology. It says Ripple is making a lot of progress over SWIFT, which currently monopolizes the remittance market. Uh, with uh, various solutions, low transaction time, low cost, adding partners and offering less volatility and more, Ripple is surely making its move. Now, Ripple actually is is really um, uh, better than Swift. Um, Swift is trying to upgrade, trying to use different ty types of technologies to upgrade, uh, but they're nowhere near what uh, Ripple XRP has to offer. Uh, then. The speed, we know that Ripple is much faster than Swift. Um, it takes seconds, where Swift takes days. And uh, it's an example of here of a guy who sent $485,000. It cost him $70, and it took 11 hours and 6 minutes. And it may have taken longer than that, I think. Um, but it was a Swift GPI demo. <laughs> uh, so that's still uh, crazy to compared to what Swift... Uh, compared to what uh, Ripple XRP can do, uh, there was a two billion one hundred thirty-nine million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred seventy dollars, and it costs less than a penny. Um, and so we know that uh, that that's the main thing. What, what, what understanding that Ripple is better for cross-border payments than anything. But uh, I want to give a shout out to this lady right here. I have been following this lady on Twitter. I don't know her. But I've enjoyed all of her Twitter comments and uh, not only me, but a lot of other people that I, I keep up with on Twitter have are enjoying her comments as well. And as she says something about leaving us. She had taken a, a month a month off and uh, we hadn't seen her for a month on Twitter. But I want to say on my program on this channel, please don't leave. We really need to hear what you have to say. And she's quoted right here. Her name is Rachel Lee. Like I said, I don't know her. I've never met her or anything like that, but I just want to give her a shout out. Rachel Lee, and she writes, uh, as the U.S. dollar fades from being used in trade between multiple nations, a new system would need to step up and step in to bridge the gap. This is where Ripple, hashtag Ripple and hashtag XRP come in, and this is why the globalists are all over this project. What you see is by design, not accident and then she puts this she says swift has two options <laughs> and this is this really got me because she nailed it right here she says swift has two options die off like the u.s dollar reserve status or hook up with ripple tech and survive yeah <laughs> she says uh i'll read it again i mean i read it when i read it, i just just laughed for for a while yeah. swift has two options die off like the u.s dollar reserve status or hook up with Ripple Tech and survive. Swift is already on board 
with Ripple. Swift is already on board with Ripple. Do your research. Connect the dots. There is no other way Swift survives without coming. The U.S. dollar reserve status keeps Swift alive. <laughs> I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, her comments. Um, I totally agree with with what she uh, what she put here. And uh, like I said, R Rachel Lee is, is she's she's put some awesome comments on her Twitter page. So if you don't follow her on Twitter, make sure you get out there and you follow uh, Rachel Lee on Twitter. Like, but I don't know her. I just want to make that I've never met her. I don't know her, but her her tweets are pretty awesome. All right. Um, uh, but the only thing I'll say about uh, the SWIFT has two options, die off like the U.S. dollar reserve status. Uh, I think that, uh, I'll just add to that, and I don't know if she's being comical, she might be serious, I don't know. But dying off, uh, the reserve, uh, the United States giving up reserve status, uh, that would cause a global crisis, right? I mean, if the United States gave up its reserve status, then you would have that much more, do that much more dollars into the, uh, into the uh, global economy. And, in, and that will cause uh, a global crisis for sure. That will cause instability in the market. And then that, that would have to cause something like uh, the IMF to step in with the SDRs, which are standard drawing rights. The IMF would have to step in and, uh, uh, because that's what the IMF is for. Uh, when countries are going through global cli uh, a global crisis like Greece and some of the other countries, the IMF steps in and IMF tells them what to do and they bring in their paper money, right? SDRs are another uh, way of printed paper money. We actually really have nothing to back them up. It's not gold that backs up the SDR. It's another paper, another form of paper money, but it's controlled by the IMF. And then they would have to step in and uh, they would have to t help out uh, the country uh, that is having, having the problem. So hopefully uh, we don't die off like the U.S. <laughs> the dollar reserve status. <laughs> I hope we can keep that the U.S. dollar reserve status at least for a while, okay? But a great article. Shout out to Rachel Lee. I, I don't know. They should pay her. I mean, I, I don't know if they pay uh, her for her comments being in this um, in this article. Uh, Coin great, the Internet of Money. Uh, Rachel, you should ask them to send you a check. If they use your words, they should send you a check. All right. So <laughs> I just want to give that shout out. Uh, what's behind me is the, uh, the uh, this picture behind me is uh, the. SDR basket and in the SDR basket back there if you can see they have the one in the for the standard drawing rights the special the special drawing rights they have the one they have the US dollar they have the euro they have the Japan money the China money which got added in 2016 and the picture says I've shown that uh, there's a possibility that there is a digital currency Christine Lagarde on my last video makes a statement that they're gonna have to add a digital currency to the SDR and hopefully that SDR, that currency, is none other than Ripple XRP. They, that's my prediction. I could be wrong. Um, maybe it won't be exclusive. But it might be uh, part of the selection. But Ripple is definitely a, uh, a contender for anything dealing with uh, cross-border payments and banks. All right. So also, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to say, would you please uh, follow me on Twitter um, uh, with Crypto News and Investigative Reports. We're on Twitter. Uh, our Twitter is Crypto News and Investigative Report at RobTech, R-O-B-T-E-C-H, RobTech P. And uh, please make sure that you, uh, you, you know, you follow us on Twitter. Also, if I can get you to uh, subscribe to our channel and click that little bell there so you can get updates every time we have a video that's up. And I tweet out mostly everything that I talk about or I try to tweet out. That way you'll have the links to what I'm talking about. Uh, here's another article that I want to talk about today for a few minutes is that the IMF advises against crypto as legal tender in the Marshall Islands uh, report. The IMF has a lot of power and the IMF, if they say don't do it, you can't do it. And they're talking to the uh, Marshall Islands Bank. And what, what's important about this is that it is a template to what any other central bank would do. The, uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is not allowing uh, any uh, central banks to connect their digital asset to the United States dollar because it is the reserve currency uh, because it is the reserve currency of the world so they're not letting the, IM the IMF is not allowing any country any uh, any central bank to connect itself to the US dollar in terms of making it a legal tender uh, and uh, 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 make it a, a digital uh, digital dollar let me see 
here's the article right here. Uh, and let's go through it a little bit. It says the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has advised against the Republic of the Marshall Islands plan to introduce a digital currency as a second legal tender alongside the U.S. dollar. The IMF is saying, oh, no, you're not. You're not going to do that. And we're not going for it. The Marshall Islands, a remote chain in the islands of the Central Pacific, passed a law on this on the issue in February on this issue in February, aiming for the planned sovereign sovereign cryptocurrency to boost the local economy and encountering the increasing risk of the nation becoming disconnected from the global financial uh, system. Uh, the IMF is saying, no way, you're not going to allow they're not going to allow you to do that. Uh, and the IMF sent them a, a letter. This is came out was published today, September well maybe yesterday, September 10th. Today's the 11th, I think. Yeah, today's September 11th. Uh, it says the economy rebounded in 2016 after a two-year recession, and growth is expected to remain robust, driven by the continued infrastructure investment. Overall risk remained titled to the downside. The insurance of a decentralized digital currency as a second legal tender would increase microeconomics and financial integrity risk and elevate the risk of losing that last U.S. dollar correspondent banking relationship. Insufficient fiscal consolidation before the reduction of the U.S. Compact Grant of 2023. Now, we already know that 2023 is going to be a serious year. Uh, something is up for 2023. Um, I don't think you can even get a bank card that's going to give you more uh, that's not going to give you a date up to 2023. I don't. I, I think everything currently right now in banking is just to 2022. Uh, I think you can check your bank card and see if you got a bank card that says in, in the United States that says it's uh, good until 2024. Let me know. All right. It says remain the main medium to long term risk. So they got something's going on. But anyway, with that being said, uh, there's they're not going to allow. Uh, any central bank to connect any digital currency to the U.S. dollar because the IMF has some plans that they do not want some uh, the central banks to interrupt. Um, and so uh, that's one of the things. The other thing is that uh, they don't want <clears throat> they don't want the reserve currency to be connected to any anything right now. Um, the Federal Reserve, which is our central bank, the American Central Bank is going to have to figure out which digital currency they're going to select. So you can't have some other country making a digital currency going alongside the U.S. dollar when the Federal Reserve of the United States have even selected the federal uh, the digital currency that they're going to select. All right? That's one of the things. And so uh, the IMF don't want to connect anything. Don't connect anything to the, to the, uh, to the uh, dollar. Uh, so if this country is actually having economic problems, what the IMF suggested that they would do and it's come into this country, and which is what the IMF actually does. The IMF actually comes into the country and with the SDRs. And the SDRs are the special drawing rights, which is the picture you see behind me. They come in with those dollars to help that country uh, when they're in a, a financial crisis. Like, for instance, what Rachel was saying, if the United States give up this reserve currency, there will be a financial crisis in the United States. They will cause uh, a financial crisis, and then it will cause hyperinflation. And I think if I go back to my page, my page, I tweeted out what uh, a hypothetical. And it's only, folks, I want to say again, it's only a hypothetical. Um, let me see if I can find it. You know, you're always looking for something that makes it kind of difficult to find. And I just want to give you uh, my hypothetical. All right. No. All right. My hypothetical was the first thing that uh, if um, uh, the hypothetical I wrote was the 2018, uh, the 2008 crisis, financial crisis. Oh, here it is right here. I tweeted it out. Uh, the hypothetical. I've tweeted out in 2008, the uh, world loses confidence in the U.S. dollar. That's hypothetically, you know, say that the world loses confidence because of what happened in 2008. And eventually, the U.S. dollar loses its reserve status, like Rachel was saying. Uh, the eventually, the U.S. dollar loses its reserve status, hypothetically. All right, then that would cause a global crisis, right? 
And if it causes a global crisis, it will cause hyperinflation. And that will be because there's too much U.S. dollars out there that are decreasing in value. If it's decreasing in value and then losing its reserve status, there's the, it's the reserve status. So that will just cause a big, gigantic global crisis. All right. And then so the IMF comes to the global crisis, say if you're not, it's the United States, hypothetically. Now, the IMF comes with the SDRs to restore confidence because people have lost confidence because of the 2008, hypothetically. <laughs> Stay with me. And so IMF comes in with the SDRs to restore confidence, all right? And then he, what happens after they come in with the SDRs, you have a global reset, and maybe the global reset would be with a digital asset, and hopefully, like Rachel said, that digital asset would be Ripple XRP. <laughs> <laughs> the cryptocurrency XRP would could uh, could help us to bounce back. I don't know. This was my hypothetical ideology. I can be wrong. You guys can correct me. All right. And then you end up having the have and the have nots in this to be continued. But uh, there is a hidden role of the gold in the IMF. They are working to try to make the SDRs uh, like gold, giving it that kind of a gold type status. But um, they. You know, the United States still has about uh, 17 tons of gold. And so that would be pretty difficult. But uh, and I tweeted out some more stuff about the SDRs is gaining and gaining strength in, chi in the China markets. Does that mean that the USDA is looking for the going to lose their reserve currency status? <laughs> There's that reserve currency status again, because uh, that has a lot to do with everything. So anyway, um, I just wanted to uh, bring that to our attention today. Um, and I tweeted out IMF may consider adding uh, cryptocurrencies to the special drawing rights, which is the picture that you see behind me, because I'm suggesting that maybe uh, the, S the uh, uh, Ripple XRP could really help uh, uh, with um, the SDRs. Okay, uh, Ripple XRP can actually really help with the SDRs, so that'd be an interesting thing. All right, I want to know what you all think about all this. Uh, uh, there's a big conversation going on now about SDRs. I've been kind of trolling the issue for a couple of, uh, maybe eight, nine months. And uh, there's a lot of books out on the SDRs and gold and, and what the Japanese are trying to do. Okay. And then, uh, to last but not least, uh, yesterday I put out a video. I want to add to that video that I put out yesterday that when Christine Lagarde was talking to the wo wo woman, uh, the representative from the Central Bank of Russia, when she was talking to that woman, she asked that woman about uh, adding a uh, digital currency to Russia. Uh, and, you know, each country is going to have to establish their digital currency. And Russia is probably going to be one of the ones that do. Um, and so here's a great article. The Great Warns of China, U.S.-China Trade War Shocks to EM. The Great Warns of the U.S.-China Trade War Shocks to Emerging Markets. Um, so trade is can cause inflation. You know, the trade wars can cause tariffs to go up, inflation and everything. So she's trying, it's their job. She's trying to keep that down because there is something that I just can't put my finger on that is about to happen in 2023. I don't know what that is, but everything that I'm digging up and everything that I'm reading is that there is something going to happen in 2023. All right. Uh, the IMF may consider, I already read that, IMF adding uh, that, uh, Ripple beating Swift, I already talked about that, um, I talked about uh, Rachel Lee, and yeah, um, my prayers go out to the, uh, so, uh, it's, I think it's pronounced So Che Zhang, uh, I wanted to hear him, yes, uh, day before yesterday, Sunday, I went to this Focus on a Blockchain Conference to hear him talk about the central bank digital currency. And I was told from the uh, one of the uh, people that put the program on, put the conference on, that he had an emergency in his family. He had to fly from France back to China. But they were nice enough to let me know that he was coming in October and they're going to let me know uh, if he's going to be able to make it. And I'll be able to hear him talk about the uh, central bank digital currency. All right. So until the next time, guys, uh, wherever you are, have a great day. If it's daytime or wherever you are. It's a great night. Have a great night. And I will.